everybody. Welcome to another VAC Motorsports video. Today we're presenting um, some information on S58 and S55 differences, some general knowledge on uh, connecting rod um, manufacturing, I guess you would say, manufacturing techniques. Um, or finishing techniques as well because we're not going to talk about how the manufacturers make the connecting rod but we're going to talk about how the manufacturers finish the connecting rods um, and there's a couple of different ways uh, so let's get started uh, today Paul is with me again you know I feel that we always have to have a good-looking guy <laughs> and, and Paul's the man uh, Paul is a, a good-looking guy that has a lot of knowledge too so He'll be chiming in on occasion. Uh, basically, what you see today is a collection of SP connecting rods, arrow connecting rods, Carrillo connecting rods, CP pistons, and the bearings. The bearings we touched on a little bit before. We're not really gonna get into the bearings. Uh, we're gonna talk more about connecting rods and, and the pistons, the difference between the pistons of an S55, S58, and the connecting rods of a in S55, S58. So let's have at it. We don't want to take too much time of your day, but we want to try to share some, some good information. So let's start with the pistons first, first and foremost. What we have are two style pistons on the table. This piston over here is the S58. This piston over here is the S55. This piston has coatings. Dome coatings, skirt coatings. This is an uncoated, so we wanted to show what the two different finishes look like. The S58 is 82 millimeter piston that we have on the table, and the S55 is an 84 millimeter. Now what I want to show you is the underside of the pistons. The forgings that are used to make both pistons are the same. If you look underneath, you'll see the CP forged in there and then you'll see also the 84T. I'll just flip that around this way for you. So these forgings are capable of basically the 84 millimeter. Therefore 84, 82 on the S58. Um, from a pin size perspective they basically, you could see that probably by eye a little bit over here and if I were to measure that I believe uh, one is going to measure as a a 22 and the other should measure as a 23. On the connecting rods, really what we wanted to talk about the most right now. On the connecting rods, all three manufacturers as we've discussed before are really, really good quality manufacturers. Um, Carrillo has a long, rich history. Arrow has a long, rich history. And uh, SP is a has a pretty good history as well, just, you know, not at the same level of history that, that uh, Carrillo and, and Arrow are, um, have been at, let's say. So, I'm going to show two different things real quick here. So, an S58 connecting rod is measuring at 22 and a half millimeter. That's clearance for 22 and a half. On the small end, it will measure the same way. BMW typically, what we have seen over the years, whatever the, the width is on the big end, it's the same width on the pin end. On the S55, they are measuring it basically 21 millimeter, both small end and big end. So the object here was to show was to show the two different connecting rod ends. So the small end, we have two different types. There's a tapered and then there's the full. In most aftermarket applications, if you're really looking to make the most power, typically you're going with, with this design and the piston is made to accept it. And if you are going to fit something in an OE piston and the, the factory made them with the tapered end, then you're gonna need the tapered end style. 
Now, often people want to buy a connecting rod that's capable of 2,000 horsepower, let's say in a V8. And they don't want to change the piston. So that, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, if I may say so myself, because the factory pistons are not capable of handling that kind of power. So if you are going to make that kind of power, then you really should be changing pistons and connecting rods. If you want something that's going to be for less power and you want to keep with the tapered pin design and run a factory piston, it's great. Um, that is, you know, basically how you're going to decide. But if you're really looking to make big power, you can use the full design with the forged pistons. If you're keeping factory pistons, then you want to use a tapered design. So both potentially are available in, in the models that were offered like that. S63 from the factory is tapered, S58 from the factory is tapered. Um, you know, so they're two of the models that are probably the best sellers. So um, having said that, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the finish of the big ends and uh, the small ends. So if you look over here, we talked, I think in a previous video, we talked about how they're honed and the finishes. So you look at both of these manufacturers, the small end and the big end are honed finishes. When you go to Arrow Precision, now you're talking about a product that's made and finished differently. When you look at that big end, you can't see the parting edge. And the reason you can't see the parting edge is because they grind, they ID grind both the big end and the small end. Now, why grinding? In uh, very precision manufacturing, grinding is the most accurate way to size something, and it's the best finish that you could ever have. So when you want a nice finish, it's a ground finish. When you look at your crankshafts, your crankshafts are ground finishes. This is ground. This is the best finish you can put in a connecting rod. And this basically, this one feature is what separates arrow precision from the rest. That doesn't make the others bad, but this is the feature that separates these guys. When you look at a honed finish, and so we're gonna talk about the Carrillo here. And you could see the parting seam after the honing. Not the end of the world. And then you could see the honed finish on the pin bushing side. Now these, as you, uh, as you may be aware if you watched the previous video, we talked about how we measure them and we have, you know, the right way to measure them is on a sun and gauge that's designed for rod measuring, squaring up, squaring up the face, both small and then big end and getting accurate dimensions. Um, I guess what I should improvise on, one of the things I should improvise on is, is on sizing for rods. I'm not sure if we touched on that before. Anytime you get a rod, I don't care which brand you get, you should always check your size. Always check the big end and make sure that they're consistent, make sure that you have the clearances that are required. Don't just focus on the big end. Don't forget that the small end needs clearance as well. And based on, based on the clearance that you desire, not that I tell you or anybody else tells you, if you're the engine builder, you know what clearance you wanna have on your small end. It's wise to check the small end. Again, this is a honed finish and this is a ground finish. When you look at that, they definitely by eye, you can see the difference. So um, that's what I have to share regarding finishes and, and regarding the different style connecting rods, the tapered end, making sure everything is gonna work properly for you. Um, Paul, what do you have to, to share? I know you have, you've seen many years of uh, you know, connecting rod technology. And I mean, you and I started working a long time ago and I know that the tapered end although it seems to be new, maybe a little bit newer on the automotive side. This technology has been used. No, it's been used for years in diesels. In diesels, heavy duty, heavy heavy duty, duty applications, diesels. right? You want, you want to just give some, shed some well, light with that? 
the reason for the taper is because of the load and you get a larger bearing surface is where the load is and that would be on the uh, lower portion of the connecting rod in here and with the piston just the opposite your load is up here so therefore you have a wider surface here and a wider surface here here doesn't matter because there's no load here so you you have more bearing surface here on both the piston and the connecting rod does it matter it can it can matter uh, on a high horsepower engine, naturally, it's going to matter. Yep. Absolutely matters. Yeah. Absolutely matters. Yeah, I mean, your bearing and surface area is where you want to carry the load. And it distributes the load across the, the, the wrist pin where you're not trying to bend the wrist pin because it's carrying the load on both ends. So, you know, to elaborate on, to elaborate on that a little bit, when you start turning higher RPM, mass is, is a concern. So, you know, maybe if you're doing turbo and you're not turning crazy RPM, you're not worried about the, the loads stretching. But if we were to take the piston and you had it on the connecting rod and you had your, you had your pin in there, when you, when you fire, you're pushing down. So you're, you're trying to bend the pin down this way. So we, we are, kind of against going with light wall thickness pins because the thin wall piston pins tend to bend and they tend to end up loading the edge of the rods and sometimes they can crack the, the bushings that are in the connecting rod. They also can go out around too. Right. Because you're squashing right. the piston. Right. The so, piston. so when you're firing all the load is bearing down. Now when you start to go the other way you know you're changing direction all the time. So you're accelerating, decelerating. When you get to bottom dead center, you're, you're basically stopping. When you get to top dead center, you're stopping and changing direction. So when you're doing this, at one point, the rod is in stretch, but not only the rod is in stretch, the fasteners are in stretch. And that's why it's critical to have better quality fasteners for higher RPM use, not necessarily for higher horsepower use. So if you're making 5,000 horsepower, at 5,000 RPM, the fasteners are not going to matter like, you know, 8,000 RPM with that kind of power. The power is really not going to be the, the, the main uh, effect on the connecting rod bolts. The conrod bolts, the biggest reason to use them is to prevent deformation and prevent stretch and to be able to keep the, the big end round at all times. So, um, you know, that's really the purpose of the bolt. So, when you're talking about Carrillo, when do you want to use car bolt? When do you want to use uh, a WMC? Well, you know, the same application if you're talking about, let's say, S63, and you're talking about a thousand horsepower. People say, I want to build an S63, I want to make a thousand horsepower. I mean, a thousand horsepower is a lot. You want to make 1200, that's a lot, right? And you can make more than that. But, I like to talk horsepower per cylinder because each component is really a per cylinder power. It's not the complete engine. There's guys making a thousand horsepower with a four cylinder. Well, guess what? Those components are a lot more under stress than the components of a V8 that's making a thousand horsepower. So what we'd like to really educate and put out there is that we need to talk about horsepower per cylinder, not total horsepower. So. 1200 horsepower on a six cylinder is 200 per. If you took that same formula and, and put 200 on an eight cylinder, now you're 1600. And the components, same components, are gonna handle 1600 because it's 200 per. Figured I'd share that with you because quite often when people contact us and start talking horsepower, they just talk about the total horsepower number, not horsepower per cylinder. When we're doing calculations, we're doing calculations based on horsepower per cylinder. So uh, I'm not sure, you know, how much more we can add. Like, with the, we don't want this to, to go on forever. We talked about the different fasteners. So with Carrillo, there's WMC fasteners and and there's car bolts. With ARP, you typically have ARP 2000, and then you can have Custom H 625 or L19. 
the connecting rods uh, that are made with heavier duty, you know, Arrow use um, ARP fasteners and the Carrillos use the car fasteners, which are basically uh, a private, their own, their own fasteners. So that's, that's the little scoop on the fasteners. The scoop on the tapered ends versus a standard straight pin end and on, on the big ends. Also, like I said, to recap, BMW will always maintain on, I think maybe on one occasion I've seen them have a narrower pin end than the big end. Typically the big end width and the small end width are the same. Um, on applications, on some more modern applications, they're tapered. One thing I did forget to mention, the taper, that you can get away with this because you don't need as much material here and it's not really affecting your horsepower capacity. But the pistons that, that work with this actually have about the same profile underneath. So if I'm using a straight inside here and I have that clearance, then it's going to be basically the same clearance I have when I'm using the tapered inside of tapered. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the aftermarket pistons that we have don't have that and I don't have a, a standard piston to show you. If you added more material inside the piston to achieve that taper, aluminum is one third the mass of steel. So if I were to take eight grams off or 10 grams off of here and I added it in here, we want to do the three to one, nine grams. When I add that material inside the piston, I'm only adding three grams. So my total mass is going to be decreased by six grams. Now I'm just picking those numbers. Maybe it's a little bit more than that, but that's probably a close number. So figured I'd share that last little bit of trivia and uh, I think we can probably close this. Uh, what we want to show, and I believe that uh, some pictures have been taken, as I mentioned earlier, S58 that's about to come apart on the bottom end, the cylinder heads already apart and waiting to get CNC ported. Um, and I guess that's it. One, at one point we're going to do a comparison. We'll show an S55 and an S58 side by side. Um, what we can, instead of a comparison, we can just talk about. You look at this deck. This is pretty beefy. They have plenty of coolant passages here, but there's, there's a lot of meat. And the advantage of this engine, what I always tell people when we're doing other engine builds, is let's try to keep the meat between the cylinders, you know, full, as full as we can. And so one reason not to take the 82 and try to make it an 85 is because you want to have more gasket material for reliability between the cylinders. So hopefully you found this uh, informative. This is good, if we want to call it trivial info. Um, hopefully that gets the job done for now. And as usual, uh, you know, please make suggestions, recommendations, comments, and be sure to follow for, for more content coming up hopefully in another week or two. Thank you again and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next VAC TV.